Let's create one more plate inside the assembly. So to identify one versus the other, I'm going to go here and go to properties. And I'm going to use the reference tab to rename this to be the dash 100 L dash dash P for part. When I rename that there, does it rename the original detail? When I click on the original detail, see these are linked. Whatever happens here is going to automatically change the assembly instantly. So I'm going to click over here and let's right click on this. I, the name's kind of driving me nuts right now, so I'm just going to change it. Oh, God, can I? Dash, dash. I'm going to call this A for assembly. <clears throat> and then I've named this L so I can make another one just like it called R. So instead of making a new part, figuring out the local axis system, I'm going to go ahead and stay in this but make a detail in here. So I'm going to right click on this and we're going to insert and we're going to make a brand new 3D part inside the assembly. So when I click on this, it automatically gets named. You got to make sure that you're in the assembly design and this one here was active in the tree on top here. That's got to be active. I'm going to double click on this, open this up, and under there is a part. I double click on that and you'll see my workbench change from assembly to this. I'll double click on this. I'm going to go to define in work object. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to create my local access system by just going into model tab and then picking on the axis system and building this on the fly under the origin you use your contextual menu and go to create a point under create a point I know my X and Z do not change the only thing that changes is the Y I don't remember what it was so I'm going to go back and look for this barbell it was 8652 minus 1625. You got to divide the 8652 in half. So just simply with it highlighted, 8652 divided by 2 minus 16 and a quarter. Nothing has to be in parentheses because it does multiplication and division first. So it will take this and divide that first and then subtract off the 16 and a quarter. I always like to hit tab just to see about where it's going to land. Okay, it looks like it's landing in the right spot. I'll select OK. I like to just open up the axis and I should rename this to local axis right away. Oops, I didn't say OK to that, did I? Dang it. Let's go to axis and just for fun repeat that. Uh, I didn't remember the Y, so now I gotta redo this all over again. It was 86.52 divided by 2 minus 16 and a quarter. Preview that. Oh god, what did I do? Try that again. 86.52 divided by 2 minus 16 and a quarter. Preview that. That looks like it's in the right spot. Say OK. It created the axis system. I'm going to say OK, and then uh, my axis is created. I should rename that to local axis, and I'm going to select right on this plane. Go to the sketch. Sketch those two circles. I'm just kind of using this one as reference. 
Here's that one. Create another circle. Now, if I type them in, I won't have to auto constrain it. It would have just put in the constraints automatically for me. Since I didn't type in the constraints, I just was randomly selecting stuff. I got to come here. I'll just go to auto constraints because I think that's the fastest way to hurry up and do that. Double click this radius and change it to a diameter because they gave me a two inch diameter. I'm going to go with that. And then this diameter is 17 and a half. So double click on that and switch it to diameter. Change your value to 17, uh, 17 and a half. Exit. Okay. And then when I do my pad, I don't need, oh dang it, I forgot to do something back. I don't need to go in the negative direction. This time I need to go positive two inches. Now I've got a hundred pound plate on each side. I should go into this part body and fix this geometrical set because I don't want the sketch listed in two places. So if you're lucky and you catch this soon enough, you should be able to grab the sketch, click and hold on it and drag and drop it into the part body. So it's only represented here I should do the same thing for this one. Grab that sketch and move it down into this part body so it's not represented anywhere else. Um, what happened there was it pulled my sketch out of hide, so I'm going to rehide that. Undo. What did I do? I think I accidentally copied this. I'm not in this part, so what I gotta do is double click this 100 pound plate right here to get into that part, and now that I'm in that part, looks like I accidentally duplicated that pl plate. I wasn't paying attention. So I need to delete that sketch out, okay? And this sketch here should be here in this part body. Okay, not in the geometrical set. I'm gonna double click the assembly and I'm going to right click and I'm going to display the specification tree and just go to the first level so I can just see my parts. Now it looks like this needs to be renamed. So before, well let's go ahead and get, double click on that to get in there, right click properties and let's see if I can just hit my up or down arrows and find that same name. I'll change the L to an R for right side. Okay. I think what would also be nice if I went to instance, under instance, I could type in 100 pound plate too. That'd be fine if I listed it twice. They're both 100 pound plates. Okay. So, anybody looking at this, it kind of helps them understand and read what's going on, how it was put together. Final thing to do is view, ISO view, fit all in. Okay, and we're going to do one more thing. We're going to analyze this and make sure it's right. So I'm just going to kind of, so I can see both sides. Under assembly, we want to do the interference check. Uh, let's double click this assembly up here, make sure I'm in that assembly. And then use my interference check. It says that these two are contacting. Hmm. Do I not have contact on the other one? Let's see. I should be at this assembly. Interference, my pop up window is not coming up. Why don't I have my pop up window coming up? I'm going to grab this other one here, check for contact. 
between all components and select OK. It takes me into a different window. That's what this interference simulation is, but where is my results? Why don't why are my results not coming back? I'm not sure what happened here. Where oh, so I gotta turn the tree on. It used to default to turn the tree on. I double click the contacts, and you can see those two are contacting each other. And this one over here, these two are contacting each other. All right. Hopefully that is enough to help you get your barbell set completed. Uh, your barbell with all weights loaded. All right. Good luck with that. Hope that helps work together as a group to help each other get through this.